What's going on YouTube and all you civilian Jeep viewers? Today, we're gonna to be going over something that I bought about five months ago. Yes, this is my modern day dream, dream Jeep. Now, it's not my dream Jeep of all time, although it's high on the list, but 2000s air and above, this is definitely the cream of the crop for me. I've said for years now that I've wanted a LJ, not only just an LJ, I want an LJ Rubicon, and not only just the LJ Rubicon, I wanted an Impact Orange. If you know these Jeeps, you know just how rare Impact Orange LJRs are. There's, they produced about 600 of them, 270 in 2005, which that's what this one is, and they produced 330 of them in 2006. Now, these LJRs are great because the wheelbase, I believe, is uh, 10 inches longer and the actual body's 15 inches longer than the standard TJ. Now, they made the standard TJs, I think production numbers are around 950,000 of those, and the LJ Rubicons are about 12,000. And then the Unlimited's total, I somewhere between 30 and 50,000 unlimiteds were made but if you know these jeeps you know just how rare this is and i want to give you a walk around of this jeep i'm not going to tell you how much i paid for it or a financial aspect that'll be a completely different video if you guys want to see that let me just tell you it's a lot <laughs> this, these jeeps aren't cheap anymore but i still was able to keep the cj7 and the wheelies so don't fret they'll still be on this channel but let me give you a walk around of this jeep so first i'm going to start with the suspension of this jeep the suspension, as you can tell, has uh, been altered quite a bit. It's a long arm Fadtech lift. They don't make this lift anymore, but so far it's been great. It's got really beefy uh, links and the heim joints are nice and sturdy. Uh, it's four linked in the front, which is the factory four link. And then the rear, it's actually three linked, which is really cool. You don't see that too often. Uh, it's removed the rear track bar and it has two lower control arms. And then if I can get it to pan, you can see that the rear there is just the triangulated to the center of the differential for the third link of that system. The tires on this are Falcon Wild Peak MTs. They're 37s. Um, on the Pro Comp 17 by 9 real bead locks, these are the Pro Comp 75 series. And so far they've They've been quite nice. They come with a black lip and I took a drill and a wire wheel and a brush and I've sanded them down to the brushed aluminum look. I just like that a little better. It gives a little more contrast and suspension wise, let's go around to the front and I'll update you on some of that. This is the stock sway bar. I thought about an anti-rock, but being eight inches, I'm just gonna keep the stock on with these adjustable uh, JKS sway bar links so the steering on this thing was factory when i got it and then i put the curry correct link steering on it because the factory stuff's like a toothpick so i've upgraded that and then the track bar is the curry correct link track bar as well the steering stabilizer on this is the fox as well as the eight inch shocks have been replaced or eight inch lift i should say shocks have been replaced with the fox shocks I think these are the 2.0 series. So far they've been great. It rides pretty well for what it is on eight inches. Whenever I got it, it had tons of steering issues, but I've sorted through those. So this is the full belly pan for the long arm system. It has a skid plate that goes on there as well, but I have that off at the moment. I'll get into more in, on that, on why I have it off later. I did forget to mention that these bead locks, one of the big reasons I like these is because the TJ bolt pattern is five by four and a half and this uses the stock bolt pattern. I don't have to run any adapters or anything in that area. Although I might have to eventually put a spacer on because if you can see, I do rub just a little bit at full lock with these 37 1250s. You can see that this is a Dana Spicer 44 cover on a Dana 44. This is the factory 44 in the front. One day I plan on trussing this across here and putting the sea gussets on. They don't have those yet, but I do plan on doing that upgrade here in the near future to be able to really handle these 37s nicely. So the lockers in this are still the factory and they're gel broken, which means I have a switch that I can flip to basically let it go into full lock either in too high, four high, four low, whatever mode I'm in, I can lock the lockers. The rear is the same deal. I got a Spicer cover on it as well. And it's trussed because of the three link system that I mentioned. So 
it's already trussed, gives it a little bit more rigidity. And the rear has chromoly alloy USA shafts in it. So it's pretty set up. Although I've not heard the best things about Alloy USA, I might do revolution shafts whenever those snap, and if those snap, the front's just still a factory, but whenever I snap a shaft up front or a U-joint, I plan on doing the RCVs in the front, so that's in the near future. I'll just have to see what happens first. And it does have 513 USA gears in it. I got that redone. I can't do differential gearing myself, so I got that done at the shop. And the guy that did that for me said the front had been messed with before and somebody had screwed it all up. I mean, this front axle was, was pretty rough, so it's got all new ball joints in it. And um, the drive shaft has new U-joints and the steering got replaced, like I mentioned earlier. So a lot of the front end is new and the bearings inside there and all the seals and all that has been changed out as well as long as 513 gears to pull these 37s down the road but if you want to see this thing flex hold out to the end of the video because i fully plan on flexing it out on a pretty decent sized tree stump that i have over near my house so hold on and uh, watch for that at the end of the video but let's go ahead and go to the body the body has one of the big things you can see this arb safari snorkel was installed that connects to the factory airbox. It just runs through the fender and into the airbox and the airbox factory intake location has been capped off. I'll show you that when we get to the engine bay later. So along with the Safari Snorkel, we have the AEV sliders. And if you know LJs and the factory Mopar AEV stuff, you know that these are highly sought after and hard to find. As well as what it used to have was the AEV Mopar Jeep front and rear bumpers and those things are like gold, but the previous owner sold those off um, This bumper is the moto built bumper and the rear bumper that's on here now is the Highline Bumper with the rear tire carrier and I really like this bumper because it uses there's no Like gate down here like latch that you have to do if you just open up the rear well, I've got it locked right now. If you just open up the tailgate, the whole thing swings, which is really, really nice. I, I do like that. It has a new best top top on it. The top had been replaced a few years ago, but it was really showing its age. So I decided to put a new best top top on it. The side windows, though, are not the new windows that come with the kit. These windows ended up zipping into the new top, so I put them back in because I plan on taking this thing on the trail here pretty soon, and I don't want to just absolutely trash the side windows. The best top that you can see here, the best top soft doors, I, I love them. Like, I'm, I'm a big soft door man myself, so I found a good deal on those on Facebook Marketplace. So I got me some. It's great for the summertime, but in the winter, I have the hard factory Impact Orange doors to match. The color on this thing, Impact Orange, the paint coat is PV5. It has been repainted and it's it's in pretty good shape i mean you can tell this jeep has been used there's a little spot on the hood but overall this jeep is pretty nice with the pv5 impact orange and it is a factory pv5 impact orange even though it's been repainted they repainted it back to factory color now this right here is my gmrs radio antenna and i got it mounted inside there i actually was just talking to my cousin the other day who lives six miles down the road and it was picking it up clear as day it's quite nice um, the LJ, like I mentioned in the introduction, is 10 inches longer wheelbase than normal TJ, and it's 18 inches longer body-wise. No, I take that back. It's 15 inches longer body-wise. If I'm wrong on that, somebody correct me down in the comments, the people that know more about these than I do. So, overall, I think that's it for the body. Let's uh, go ahead and go to the inside. Oh, I almost forgot. Before I go to the inside... It has a super winch, 12,000 pound winch with a synthetic line. I put the synthetic line on there. It actually come with the rope line. And it's a Fairlead 55, or Factor 55 Fairlead. And the lighting I'll get to here in a minute. We'll save that for later. Now let's go inside and check the inside of this Jeep out. So on the interior, you can see that I've got what looks to be Rhino line floors, but it's not. It's actually a matte and it's the uh, bed rug bed trek. I put that down because the original floor in this thing 
um, didn't have carpet it was just the factory steel floor so I painted all the interior black on the what's underneath the bed tread is all black I painted that up there wasn't any rust but I didn't want it just this rug just rubbing on the factory steel floor so I painted all that black again looks really nice under there and I've got the hook grab handles I got these off Amazon um, they, so far they've been great real sturdy and I've got my phone mounted to that and then I use my phone right here for the Gaia GPS that comes in handy when out on the trail I've got it on right now I can barely see it though and then I also have a OBDMX Bluetooth scanner that plugs in and it'll show me all my gauges right now right now the Jeep isn't on so it's not going to show me anything but I have engine coolant temperature intake air temperature voltage engine rpm the calculated load value and the vehicle speed my vehicle speed's pretty close because i've re-geared it to 513s with the 37 so but it is still off like a mile or two so it is nice to have the gps vehicle speed you can see like whenever i'm on the trail i got the gopro mounted right there i just got a ram mount going to the rear view mirror so far that's not falling off yet but i don't i don't have much faith in it i think one day my rear view mirror will probably fall off now this is an apple carplay amazon just cheap radio i'm not the biggest fan of it but it's got carplay so it'll do for now this is a midland gmrs like i showed you the antenna it's the unit where everything's controlled by the actual uh mic part and i got it mounted down here just along the side of the actual tj console this is a rock knob moab uh shifter and I, so far i've really enjoyed it I, did, I didn't know what it was at first it had come on this jeep whenever i bought it but there's like a following for these things it's it's actually pretty cool this is a knob from moab that well it's a rock from moab that's created into a knob so i really do like that and then i just put the little touches down here with the american flag and the 12 volt and then you can see this is the jailbroken lockers that I have. This one's the front, this one's the rear. Flip them both up. I'm not going to do that right now. And then there's the factory Rubicon axle lock button. This Jeep used to be a hard top Jeep because it's got the rear wiper and uh, the defroster for a hard top. And I have pulled the codes on this Jeep and it did say it come with a factory hard top that I no longer have. I wish I, wish I did have the hard top though. That'll be something that comes in the future. I uh, would like to mention this Jeep's got 70,000 miles on it, so pretty low miles for something like this. You can see that the barcode on the side's been peeled off a little bit. It has been repainted, like I mentioned. So interior-wise, that's pretty much it. It's in pretty good shape. It's not bad. I've cleaned it up and done a lot to it in my five months of ownership. The AC and the heat work really well and this is just a little grab handle bar bag that I got off Amazon. It's nothing fancy, but it does the job I needed to do. So I like the extra storage that it has. I actually have a glove box. This is the factory one, but I've ordered a best top glove box for that. And I've ordered the whole console that goes right here all the way forward. And the front seat here is in pretty good shape. It has one small little rip right here, but it's not that bad. It's been kind of stitched back with what looks to be fishing line, but hey, whatever works, you know. The back seat's in pretty good shape, just a little dirty. I've got a to-go cup back there. I, I need to clean this thing a little bit, but it is my trail Jeep. So these are my traction boards. This is where I keep my winch remote, my toe strap, uh, just small little ins and outs right there. But I keep my fluids in this crate right here. Um, this is my cobalt tool kit, just a small one. This is like my go bag. It's got the tire deflators, all that good stuff. Um, it, I don't keep an air compressor back here because I have onboard air. I'll show you that when I get to the engine compartment here in a minute. If you guys would like to see a video of, you know, stuff I just take out on the trail that I keep back here in the back of the LJ, I'll do another video on that if you guys want to just leave me a comment saying that's something you guys might want to see. So now let's go to the engine. This Jeep, stock 4.0, 70,000 miles. Um, whenever I got it, it had a cylinder 3 misfire, which is pretty common in these Jeeps. The injectors, I've replaced them with the 4-hole injectors can't remember the brand uh i'm not even gonna take a stab at it i can't remember but anyway i replaced them with four hole injectors i put a dei heat shield on it 
and that fixed that issue. It did overheat, so I knew I had a uh, long journey ahead of me of trying to figure that out. I put a new condenser on it, put a new Mopar radiator on it, HPS hoses on it, a flow cooler water pump has been added, a Mopar fan clutch, a Mopar tensioner, Mopar idler pulley, the Mopar temp sensor. I mean, I've done tons of uh, just maintenance, really, on this LJ's cooling system. So this right here is my uh, Amazon switch panel box. I did forget to show you that inside. Let me go show you that right now. It's I've had it on this channel. It's the Nyrider one that I had in the CJ. I took it out whenever I put the aux beam panel in. But there, there's the switch panel that I have for my lighting. And it lights up green if I had the Jeep on. So, along with this condenser for the AC, I also had to put a new clutch and bearing in the compressor. And the previous owner before me put new cats and catalytic converters in it. This Jeep doesn't show any trouble codes, which is uh, pretty impressive. So I've got it lined out, knock on wood. I mean, it'll probably pop an error code or a check engine code tomorrow. But for now, this, this doesn't show any codes on the dash or anything in the OBD scanner that I've got. Now, the transmission, if you can see if it'll focus, I don't think it will. The transmission under there is a high impact gear transmission. This is my third transmission. That's a whole nother story. But basically, uh, the original transmission in this Jeep, third gear was completely out of it. Reverse only worked a part of the time. Uh, fifth and sixth also grinded. So I ended up contacting High Impact and they um, sent me a, a rebuilt one. And I had a time with fifth gear with the rebuilt one and also have this terrible noise in second gear. Well, they warrantied that one out and paid to have the labor and everything installed with transmission number three here. And now uh, it shifts fine in all the gears, but there is still a slight noise in second gear that I can't quite figure out. But they told me to do the break-in period. I've got, I think, about 800 miles on it. They told me to put 2,000 miles on it and see if it goes away. So that's what I'm currently doing. Now, along with the transmission, I also put a B&M shifter on it. You can't see that at the moment, but it did tighten up the shift patterns pretty considerably. That's for the NSG 370 B&M shifter. It's about 500 bucks, but it's been worth it. Uh, I originally thought the noise that I was hearing was the shifter, but it's not. It's in the actual transmission. Now, it does have a Luke or Luck or however you, however you want to say it, clutch in it with the uh, Omics all-metal throwout bearing. So it's the upgraded throwout bearing and it has just the stock, can't really see it either, the stock 241J transfer case in this. So it's the uh, 4 to 1 low range, which is quite nice on the trails. Oh, and one thing I did forget to mention earlier that it's got Black Magic rotors, pads, and the Black Magic calipers on the rear. And it's got black, ma black magic pads and rotors on the front, but I got the actual power stop calipers in that red color on the front. I don't remember the name. Uh, something with a V, as you can see. These come off Amazon. I'll link them below. I honestly, for the quality of what you pay, these are only $50. And the quality is, is great. Like, I really like these lights. They're the side shooter style, where I can turn just this on and it basically lights up like running lights or i can have all this on and obviously this right here is your main beam but this is like a flood on the side which is uh, really nice and really enjoy having that aspect of this jeep but also put some seven inch just amazon special headlights in it those are around a hundred dollars or so and it really brought it into the 21st century because if you know tj's and lj's it's like two candles in the wind along with like yj's and cj's now these are just cheap Amazon corner lights. The corner lights that were in it were pretty scratched up, so I decided to change them out. I like the the clear look. It gives it a clean clean look going on, kind of matches the Rubicon lettering on it. A couple of things that I forgot to mention on the body is that the skid, I wouldn't really say body, I'd say frame. The skid for the power steering box is poison spider. Added that myself, and let me tell you, I uh, broke this bolt right here, and that was a pain because it, it had a skid on it before, but it was a very unattractive one, just a diamond plate. Looked like a homemade job. 
And when I run the soft doors, I have to do a mirror relocation. My hard doors that I have in the garage, they have the mirror right here. So when I took the hard doors off, it didn't have a mirror on the side. And I really liked having mirrors all the way around. So I decided to get a mirror, mirror relocation for that. But I can't do it on this side because of the snorkel. But here in Tennessee, you only have to have the rear view mirror and you only have to have a driver mirror. So this makes it legal again. So now that you've seen some of the features of this Jeep, let's take it down to the stump beside my house and really flex the suspension. So I believe when I measured this stump, it was about 37 inches tall. I'll stand beside of it and kind of give you a size comparison of how tall it actually is. So that's what we're working with here. Didn't air down at all. It just climbed right up it, no problem. You can see the suspension a lot easier now. It's bump stopped pretty well. It don't eat into the fender. It gets really, really close. But for factory fenders, 37s and an eight inch lift. This thing is pretty slick. I like it a lot. Doesn't get much better than that right there. That's a, it's a nice sight. Tucking 37s. I might be able to get a little better than this if I fine tune it a little more. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the way it is. That's quite a bit of flex. Still on the stock body. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Pretty happy with it. And there you have it. That's my 2005 LJR Rubicon with 70,000 miles. Overall, I'm pleased with this Jeep. I'm really excited to see how it does off-road. Like I said, I took it out once. It did great. That was when I had 35s on it and before I did 513 gears. So we'll just have to see how it does next. So, you know, stick around. If you want to see more of this Jeep, let me know down in the comments below. And, you know, when it comes to Jeeps, keep it classic. Unless it's an 05 LJR.